Welcome to part one of adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. We are going to focus in this video on concrete models, which will set the stage for when we move into pictorial models and eventually the algorithm. So in third grade, students created equivalent fractions using these concrete models. In fourth grade, they connected models to pictures and they also connected that to creating a common denominator. So they have a lot of these foundations already in place to bridge where we're going in fifth grade. So think about the problems that you start off with. This problem I already know, only one of these denominators will need to change. So that is a lot easier to start with versus both denominators having to change into um, a common denominator. So I can estimate starting off just right off the bat thinking a third is under a half, it's, a, it's over zero, and a sixth, a sixth is pretty much closer to zero. So Estimating already tells me that this should be around a half, my answer should be. And we want them constantly estimating connecting to benchmark fractions throughout. So we're gonna start with um, a concrete model, which is pattern blocks. These are not marked. You would not want to tell them what each piece represents um, because the whole, it would all determine on the whole. So if I define the hexagon as a whole for this problem, we would want students to figure out, well, what would represent a third? So they could try different pieces and then determine that the blue diamond would represent one third. Then we'd want them to do the same thing to represent sixth, and they would probably figure out that six of these triangles um, comprise the hexagon. So they would show one of those sixth, and so I've now modeled one third plus one sixth. Now, if we wanna connect it to common denominators and equivalent fractions, which is the background that they have, we can show that one third is equivalent to two sixths. Two sixths plus one sixth equals three sixths. That will eventually require them to simplify. Some students can automatically look at this and know that that is equivalent to a half, which saves them that simplifying on the front end, just the reasoning. So think about, you can already go there just starting off building these concepts. So now let's look at fraction bars. Fraction bars are a linear model which directly connect to a number line. So this is a really important um, manipulative for them to use, especially as you connect to the linear model of a number line, which is dictated in the standards for this um, strategy. So let's look now, you can already see three fourths and one third. Both of these denominators are gonna have to change. So this is already a little bit more complex. So let's go back to benchmarks, three-fourths. Three-fourths is in between a half and one. One-third is closer to a half. So I know my answer should go over a whole. Um, so already thinking about that, I need to have enough pieces to be able to make that happen. So you see here the fraction bars have labels on them. I think it's really important that students don't always have those labels. Again, you saw in those pattern blocks, those labels weren't there, so they had to make sense of what piece comprised the whole. So you could put a sticker over the unit fraction, or you could turn them over, um, or you could use something like a Cuisinaire rod that doesn't have any labels. So just think about um, how you can kind of stretch that representation. So let's show three-fourths. We'll show one-third. And we need to think about a common denominator. So this is where this piece can sometimes help you because if I look at thirds, I know a common denominator will be sixths, ninths, and twelfths. If I look at fourths, I know a common denominator would only be twelfths. So twelfths and thirds were in common. I'm sorry, twelfths were in common with thirds and fourths. So I can use my twelfth pieces. So again, you can show them with the unit fraction side up, or you can show them with the unit fraction side down. But if I add these together, I show that 3 fourths is equivalent to 9 twelfths. And then I show that 1 third is equivalent to 4 twelfths. My estimate was that I was over a whole it's really easy to see that when I use my hole. And I can actually remove these and see that I have 12 twelfths with the extra 12th left over. This is a great time to reinforce um, improper unmixed. 
Yes, my answer was 13 twelfths. 13 twelfths is equivalent to a whole and one twelfth, which I can show very easily with these linear models. So now we will look at subtract, oh, sorry. Let me go back here real quick because it's important to note that these same concepts that we just did, you would want to do with more complex problems that eventually get into mixed numbers. So you would probably share sets of fraction bars or pattern blocks, but you would want to have um, mixed numbers. You'd want to go back to these concrete manipulatives. Um, I started really basic with just fractions without the mixed numbers. So thinking about you would eventually go there with concrete as well. All right, let's look at subtraction. So we used basically, this is like a parchment pad, um, paper or patty paper um, that are easy to overlay to find a common denominator. But let's look at three-fourths minus two-thirds. So if I'm looking here, I'm already knowing that I'm going to have to find a common denominator. A very easy way to do that would be to cross these over. Now, let's start back here because we're talking about subtraction. I know three-fourths is close to a whole. I also know that two-thirds is close to a whole. So my answer is gonna be really close to zero, a whole minus a whole. So already that estimation will help me figure this out. So when I cross these over, I can see that, I'll start with three fourths. I can see that three fourths could also be nine twelfths. And I see that two thirds could also be 8 twelfths. So this helps me go ahead and create the equivalent fractions by crossing them over and seeing that their common denominator is 12. And so if I take 8 twelfths away from my 9 twelfths, I'm left with an answer of 1 twelfth. So one thing I want to point out here is we use a model like this where we cross over when we subtract I'm sorry, when we multiply fractions. So just differentiate when you're teaching this, um, you're combining or you're taking from a whole. So think about the definition of addition and subtraction. Um, whereas when we get into multiplication and we're looking at the part of the model that is shared, that means something different from the definition of multiplication. So just be careful um, if this is a model that you use to teach multiplication, that you really differentiate between the meaning of addition and subtraction. All right, let's look at your mixed numbers. Okay, so now you've got a different type of manipulative here. These are fraction circles. These are easy to make if you do not have access to them. And again, you would not wanna have a key that tells them what every piece represents. You would want them to be able to identify, if we define this as the whole, what part would these pieces mean? So I've represented one and a half and I've represented three fourths. If I go ahead and estimate, I know that this is half, I know that this is over a half, so that tells me my answer is going to go into the next hole. So my answer should be over two holes. This question, this problem particularly right now, only really relies on reasoning. So this important that you might wanna pick a day to have problems that just require reasoning. Because if a student can actually realize that two fourths is equivalent to the half that is missing from here, they can actually answer this problem immediately by shifting these pieces over. So that I can see one and one half plus three fourths is actually two holes and a fourth left over. I didn't have to change any common denominator, um, but you could have. Another connection that you could make just with reasoning is that if it's one and a half plus three fourths, I could decompose the three-fourths and a two-fourth and one-fourth, which is what this is. I took my two-fourths from over here and I moved them into here, which is equivalent to a half. And if this, what this allows me to do is add the half plus a half to make the whole and then to only have the one-fourth left over. So my answer is two and one-fourth. It's a very quick way to reason through, and there's not steps that they're having to follow. They're really making sense of what the problem's asking them. All right, let's look at one last problem before we move to the second video. Um, this is a mixed number plus a mixed number. We've represented one and one third, and again, I've 
pulled out the pieces to determine that the pinks would be thirds and then that the greens would be fourths. Um, so one and one third is represented, one and three fourths is represented. Again, if you're already noticing, I'm gonna have to find a new common piece. I was able to use um, some of the pieces that I already had in the other problem, but now I'm gonna have to find a piece that fourths and thirds both have in common. So after doing a lot of investigating, maybe in my bags of manipulatives, I figure out that twelfths are equivalent to thirds and fourths. So I don't need to worry about partitioning my holes, although I definitely could to twelfths, but it might help me just to focus on this for right now. Forgive me. Let's see. But I would connect that one and one third is equivalent to one and four twelfths. And then I've got one and three fourths, which is equivalent to one and nine twelfths. So if I combine these pieces, I'm gonna actually decompose this third, which was four twelfths, into th three remaining twelfths, because I have three twelfths that need to fill in that remaining piece, and I have a twelfth left over. So what I did with this piece is I took the four twelfths, I decomposed it into three twelfths that would fill up the remaining hole, and one twelfth that was left over. And what I was able to do is make one hole, two holes, three holes, with one twelfth left over, which would give me three and one twelfth, which was close to our estimate for the next hole number, which was three.